Hello and, and welcome, welcome to Seven, seven Days, days of, science. of Science. Starting off the very short amount of news from me this week, on July 13th, Portugal banned killer whale tours off its coastal waters for the remainder of the year. The Institution for the Conservation of Nature and Forests released a statement declaring a ban on the active approach to groups of orcas by maritime tourist vessels. This ban is in response to the endangered Strait of Gibraltar orcas, who, since 2020, have been having interactions with yachts. The consequence of many of these interactions has been damage to the rudders which have disabled the yachts and required them to be towed into the nearest port. On three occasions, the yachts have sunk. If you would like to know more about these incidents, One World has produced three videos on it. A link to the latest video is in the sources list in the description. And now over to Ben with quite a lot of quite important news. Thanks, Doug. First up in the paleontology news for this week is the naming of a spectacular new dinosaur from Thailand. Named Minimocursor funoyensis, it's dated to the late Jurassic and represents one of the best preserved dinosaur fossils ever found in all of Southeast Asia. Not only is a lot of the body preserved, almost all in articulation too, but a few bones of the skull are there as well, allowing for a reconstruction of what the head would have looked like. Minimocursor is a very basal neonophyscian, the large lineage of dinosaurs including famous examples such as Triceratops, Stegosaurus, Hadrosaurs, and many others. This is actually now the earliest record of Neonophyscians in Southeast Asia, and also the first dinosaur to have been named from this particular formation in Thailand. So a very exciting new paper there, contributing a lot of new data to our understanding of these dinosaurs' evolution. Up next, we've also got a new pterosaur species named this week, from the late Jurassic of Germany. Named Petrodactyl Wellenhoferi, which is not confusing at all, it's based on a very nicely preserved fossil which is almost all there, but a bit jumbled up and disarticulated. It's classified as a tenochasmatid, which are famous for the filter feeding adaptations of some members. However, Petrodactyl had quite short, spike-like teeth and adaptations for a strong bite, and as such, was more likely a predator of fish and other small prey. Petrodactyl is pretty large for a Jurassic pterosaur too, reaching a wingspan of about 2.1 meters, although it was not yet fully grown at the time of death. It also has a very distinctive crest on its head, which is actually among the largest known for any Jurassic pterosaur. So another amazing discovery this week, again showing that the Jurassic aged formations of Germany still have many amazing fossils to reveal. Okay, hello, this is Ben from the future. I've just had to add in another story to this week's paleontology news because the most unbelievably mind-blowing fossil possibly to have ever been found has just been announced, and there's no way we can miss this. Published in the journal Nature, a fossil from China dating to the early Cretaceous has been described that preserves a dinosaur, the small Ceratopsian Cetacosaurus, locked in a fight to the death with a much smaller prehistoric mammal called Rapinomammus. I honestly cannot properly express how absolutely insane this fossil is. I mean, just look at that. Almost every single bone is still there, and they're perfectly preserved in the exact final positions they would have been in when they were alive over 124 million years ago. The reason they were preserved so well is that these animals were very rapidly entombed by a volcanic debris flow that immediately froze them in time. And although that was a very unfortunate way to go, it has given us this absolutely stunning fossil all these millions of years later. Rapinomammus is one of the largest known mammals from the Mesozoic era, and has actually been found to have preyed on baby dinosaurs before, as a baby Cetacosaurus jaw was found in the stomach region of one fossil. This new find, though, shows that these predatory mammals were going after nearly fully grown dinosaurs too, with this Cetacosaurus individual estimated to have been about six and a half years old when it died. Looking at how the skeletons are positioned, the mammal is coiling around and is positioned on top of the left side of the dinosaur, and the left hand of the mammal is gripping the lower jaw, while its jaws are clamped around two of the dinosaur's ribs, which appear to be broken. The left hind leg of the mammal is then trapped within the leg of the dinosaur, which is folded on top of it. These animals are truly intertwined with one another, and were stuck like this for eternity when the volcanic flow suddenly buried them. So this fossil is just extraordinary, capturing, as the title of the paper says, the struggle for existence during the Mesozoic. 
Far from the traditional view of mammals living in the shadows of dinosaurs during their reign, this fossil shows that some mammals at least were vicious predators to be feared and that would take on dinosaurs significantly larger than themselves. Again, I can't express enough how extraordinary this find is. Just the odds of this specimen being preserved as it is must be immense. Truly one of the greatest fossil finds of all time. Anyway, back to Ben from the past. Moving on now, we have two very cool new papers on giant ground sloths. Firstly, an absolutely wonderful discovery of a fetal skeleton of Nothrotherium from Brazil. A lot of the skeleton of the fetus is preserved, whereas only a few fragments of the mother's bones and teeth are left, and the fetal skeleton has told paleontologists a lot about the life history of these amazing sloths. There's evidence that the fetus was chewing while it was in the uterus, as indicated by wear on its teeth, which helped to form the teeth and shows that when these sloths were first born, they could feed on solid foods after a short period of lactation. The claws of this fetus were also very strong, which potentially shows that these sloths were well adapted to clinging onto their mother's backs as soon as they were born, like is seen in modern anteaters, and that's just one of the most adorable discoveries in paleontology ever made. The other sloth news this week is also from Brazil, where researchers have found evidence of humans making pendants out of sloth remains. A rock shelter that preserves evidence of successions of human occupation has revealed two sedimentological layers that show an association of human stone tools with the remains of giant ground sloths, specifically Glossotherium. These remains include osteoderms, which are bones that grow in the skin and act to toughen it, and it turns out that among the thousands of osteoderms found, three of them were modified by humans. These modifications include drilled holes, evidence of polishing, and wear traces from everyday use. So apparently these osteoderms were being utilized as pendants by these ancient humans, which is just incredible. Additionally, these pendants date back to between 25,100 and 27,400 years ago, indicating a human presence in South America around this time, which is older than the traditional view that humans only arrived on the continent after 16,000 years ago. A very intriguing new find there then, and some fantastic paleontology news this last week. Back to Doug in the studio. Thank you very much, Ben. Well, that's it for this week's 7 Days of Science. I do hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you next week.